morning, good morning. God bless you guys. It's Sunday morning, January 31st. It's about 7 a.m. over here where I'm at. I don't think too many people are gonna be awake right now, but I gotta share with some of my heart. God bless you, God bless you. Man. Um, this morning as I was waking up and uh, walking out the door, I was just thinking and, you know, had things brought to my remembrance. And, man, I just want to share it with you guys, especially with those who are dealing with, you know what I mean, with unforgiveness. It's something that we all need to know. It's something that we all need to learn uh, because it's something that is extremely important, um, especially as a newborn, as a, as a new believer, okay? Uh, because a lot of times we get people who, uh, who are born again and who are, you know, baby Christians and and find it difficult to forgive people, okay? They still have that burden of unforgiveness on their backs, on their shoulders, and, and, and it's hard to walk this walk when we are still dealing with unforgiveness. You're gonna get tired. <laughs> you, you, you're gonna get tired, and you're gonna get tired real quick. Um, I know with me, when I got, when I first got saved back in 2009, I got saved in, uh, uh, it was uh, August of 2009. And, and I remember those first couple of years, man, I, I, I was holding on to unforgiveness that was making my, my walk extremely difficult extremely difficult because it's hard okay like it's very difficult for you to accept the forgiveness that God has given you but then you're still refusing to give forgiveness to others who have offended you like do we understand okay back then I didn't I do now that's the reason why I'm making this video but I want you to understand okay That when God gives us something, it's not just for us to, to hoarder. It's not just for us to keep. It's for us. He blesses us so that we can give it out as well. And, and forgiveness is one of those things. He doesn't just give us forgiveness just so we can say, oh, man, that's awesome. I'm forgiven. Man, you know what I mean? Like, praise God. I'm good. My sins are forgiven. I'm solid. No. No. God forgives us so that we can forgive others. And when we refuse to forgive others, like you killing yourself, you are slowly poisoning yourself. Jesus said, follow me. It's kind of hard to be a Christian. Okay. It's kind of hard to follow Christ and still hold hatred towards somebody. It's kind of hard to follow Christ and still have unforgiveness in your heart. Go ahead and throw, you know, put some bricks, put some, you know, put some heavy weight inside of a backpack or something. Throw it on your back and then just go for a walk. And and see if it if see if it affects you. Go buy yourself a 40 pound, you know what I mean? weight vest and put that thing on and then go about your daily activities and see if it doesn't affect you. When, when we have that extra weight of unforgiveness on us, it affects every aspect of our life. And I'm not trying to belittle anybody, okay? I understand sometimes we go through certain situations where we're where, where like, man, but you don't understand what I've been through. Okay, I get it. 
But you got to understand that when you hold on to unforgiveness in your heart, you're poisoning every aspect of your life. Unforgiveness poisons everything. That's like having a fruit bowl. And you see one, one apple or one orange that is that is just rotting all, oh, just oozing out all that nasty stuff. And then you say, no, 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 I can't throw that away because I, I, I paid for that one too. I'm not going to throw that one away. And you keep it there because you refuse to throw it away. You refuse to get rid of it. You, re, you refuse to get rid of the, the, the one that's rotting. And what happens? It, rot, it, 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 it spoils everything else. Unforgiveness in our heart is the same thing. It robs us of our peace. It robs our joy. It, 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 it spoils everything. And even if you're not a Christian, even if you're not following Christ, it doesn't just affect Christians. Look at people. Look at anybody that, hold, that holds on to unforgiveness in their heart. Look at somebody that is extremely grudgeful. They're miserable. They are a miserable person that has no peace. And if you allow that unforgiveness to really like start to, to, to grow roots, you become extremely bitter. Can't even stand yourself. I thank God, okay? I thank God for my wife because my wife... Like a lot of my major issues were with my father, okay? A lot of the major issues was 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 toward my father. And I, unfortunately, I had a lot of anger, a lot of, you know what I mean, a lot of hatred. I had a lot of just man, a lot of animosity toward my dad. And I thank God, okay, because it was only because of the forgiveness that God had given me, okay, that I had forgiveness to give out. And I thank God for my wife who called me out on my bull crap. You know what I mean? My, 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 my wife told me like, so how is it that you're going to walk and talk about this forgiveness, but you can't even forgive your own dad? You have to forgive him. And I remember I didn't even want to hear it. I didn't want to hear what she had to say. And I remember I prayed about it. I was, how, how do I forgive, Lord? How do I forgive? And God told me in the same manner how you received the forgiveness that I gave you by you taking the time to get to know me. In the same manner, take the time to get to know your dad and extend the forgiveness that I have given you. And it wasn't until I took the time to get to know my dad just as a person, not just, you know, like my dad, but just as a person, as a man, as a human being, that I was able to understand him. And I use that same principle, I use that same approach with people that, that you know what I mean? we're always going to run into those people that are difficult that you always run into those people that like man you you just you just don't click with you know what i mean at work or wherever you're always going to run into those people that you, you you know what i mean you just you man like this person just we bump heads get to know them the more that we get to know someone the more that we the more that we understand them like oh man like okay i i i, I see i see why you are the way you are or, you know what i mean and, 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 and another thing, the more that you take the time to get to know people, the more that you work on yourself as well. Because let's be honest, we ain't perfect. We're not perfect. Sometimes, I'll be honest, I thought, you know what I mean? Like, man, this person bugs me or this person this and that. Listen to me. Sometimes it's you. Sometimes it's me. It's not just the other person. Sometimes it's us. But it, it wasn't until I learned to remove that hatred out of my heart. It wasn't until I made the choice to remove that unforgiveness out of there that this walk 
got easier. Like I said, unforgiveness. That's just extra. That's just added weight on you. That is going to make you extremely tired. <coughs> You're going to see people just moving freely. And you're going to be over here with this backpack on your back just struggling to walk. Tired. Think about it for a second, okay? The Bible tells us that with the same measure, okay, with the same ruler that we measure other people, that is the same That is the same ruler that God's going to say, here, let me get your ruler that you use to measure other people. This is the same one that I'm going to use to measure you. So in the same manner that you gave forgiveness, that this is the same manner how I'm going to give it back to you. In the same manner how you show grace to others, let me get your ruler and I'm going to measure you. crazy thing about it is, is that God says, listen, the forgiveness that you need, I'm going to give you the forgiveness. The grace that you need, I'm going to give you the grace. Everything that you need, I'm going to give you. Well, I don't know if I can forgive that person, Lord. And God, this is how I was. I don't know if I, I don't know if I can forgive him. And I don't even know if I really want to forgive him. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, it just becomes this thing where, you know what I mean? You, 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 you feel entitled to it. And God checked me. I already gave you the forgiveness that is needed for you to give it out. <clears throat> and a lot of times we feel like, well, they don't deserve forgiveness. Okay. Could be. But let me ask you, do, do you deserve to have peace of mind? Do, do you deserve to just have calm inside of your head? Or do you want to have all of those just thoughts, all of that, just all that restlessness? Do you, I mean, like, it's crazy. People go through life just miserable because they refuse to forgive someone. Again, I'm not trying to belittle nobody. I'm not trying to sit here and say that what you went through or what they did to you, oh, come on, that was, you know what I mean? No, 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 no. I'm not trying to belittle it. But at the end of the day, do you understand that holding on to unforgiveness is doing nothing but making you miserable? It is robbing you of your peace. It is robbing you of your joy. It is robbing you of your ability. It is robbing you of your ability to develop a healthy relationship with your heavenly father. It is robbing you of the ability to develop relationships with anybody. Unforgiveness just, it completely robs you. Unforgiveness is of the devil. What does the Bible say? The enemy comes to what? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. When you hold on to unforgiveness, unforgiveness is not from God. That is from the devil. And when we hold on to unforgiveness, what does it do, what does it do to us? It steals, it kills, and it destroys. Again, I'm not trying to be jacked up. I'm not trying to belittle nobody. I'm not trying to, you know what I mean? No, no, no. Like I said, I got saved in 2009. And I'm still dealing with junk, okay? I'm not going to sit here and say like, "Hey, I'm 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 perfect." I'm not. I'm still God still, you know what I mean? When I'm feeling like, "Man, I I'm I'm actually doing pretty good." And God says, "Okay, we got to clean up this area now." And then now we got to clean up that area over there too. Don't forget about this over here. We got to we got to clean it. I like the surface clean. God says, "No, no, no. We we're going to deep clean. We're going to get all that junk out of there." But like I said, my biggest hangup was with, with my own dad. The devil had tried to destroy our family and, and, and my biggest hangup was with my own dad. And it wasn't until I took the time to get to know my dad, okay? 
that I understood like, man, my, my dad's dad died when my dad was only 14 years old. My dad grew up without a, without a father figure. And he was the youngest. And my older, you know what I mean? His older brothers, my uncles, you know what I mean? Like, unfortunately, they weren't that great of role models. And I started to, you know, just get to know my father as a person. And I was able to understand, like, dang, you know what I mean? So you, you weren't jacked up. Like, you weren't just doing it just to be, you know, a bad person. Like, you just had a rough life. And in the same manner how I wanted people to understand me, you know what I mean? Like, I wanted to be understood, you know what I mean? I, I finally understood my dad, like, like, dang, man, you, you, you had a rough life. I understood his pain. I related to him as a person. I was able to understand him. If you're not going to do it for, uh, for for other people, okay? If you're not going to if you're not going to extend forgiveness You know what I mean? Because people deserve forgiveness. Then do it for yourself. Cuz let me tell you something, your How can I put this, man? Your unwillingness to forgive, your unwillingness to remove that poison out of you, your unwillingness to get rid of all that, it's not only affecting you. If you are a if you are a mom or a dad, regardless, okay? Ain't nobody lives under a rock. Nobody just, you know what I mean, just everybody that you come in contact with can see it. You can pretend to hide it. You know what I mean? You can pretend to like, you know, oh, no, no, no. Listen to me. You can sit there and, and, and trim up that little bush of unforgiveness and try to make it look really pretty. It's obvious what it is. Okay? And everybody can see that. Everybody knows exactly what it is. And not only does it affect you, it starts to affect others. If you are a mom or a dad, listen to me. Not only does it affect you, it's going to start to affect your children. What kind of inheritance do we want to leave for our children? Is that, is, is that going to be the only inheritance that we leave, we leave our kids? Is that, is, is, is that going to be the point of view that our children are going to have of us? Yeah, dude was always angry. Seemed like he hated us. Dude always seemed so bothered by us. Man, for the longest time, I, I you know what I mean? Like, what, 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 what legacy are we going to leave? What will we leave behind? What will be the lasting memory? What will be the, the biggest impression that we leave, you know what I mean, for our children? Mom was always angry. Man, dad was always mad, man. I don't understand. Every time dad got mad, it's, he, just, he just turned into a completely different person. Because unforgiveness will, will make you become somebody that that you're not. It'll make you miserable because you're trying to fight with it. Man, I don't want to be this way no more. Yeah, but unforgiveness will, will have you acting a fool. As soon as somebody touches that little sensitive spot, you will lash out. Unforgiveness will ruin your life. And this whole time you're sitting there, you know, anger toward that person. Again, I'm not trying to belittle nobody. I'm not trying to sit here and say, you know what I mean? Oh, hey, I understand the reason a lot of the times, okay, nine times out of 10, the reason why we hold on to unforgiveness is because it was something serious, but we have to, you, you, you gotta, you gotta get rid of it. It's going to ruin everything. It's going to ruin your life. Why? I mean, we, we like to sit here and say like, you know, old people, oh, you know, they, you know, that's they, just a grumpy old man. Oh yeah. It's just, you know, it's just an angry old lady. You, do you think like that was their dream? You think that was like their goal 
to get to when they're, you know, 60, 70, 80, whatever, you know, 90 years old, whatever, and just be that angry old person. I hope that when I get to my 60s, my 70s, my 80s, I'm, I'm, I'm still smiling. I haven't allowed this jacked up world, this jacked up, you know, place to ruin me. I hope that I'm still smiling. I hope that there's still joy coming out of me. Don't get me wrong. My life is not, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like just, you know, just great. I got my issues I'm dealing with. I lose my patience with my kids. I deal with difficult people at work. Just the other day, a dude cut me off and, man, like all of these jacked up words came to my mind and I was like, man, I did not know that all these words are still in there. <laughs> it reminded me that I still got a lot of things that I got to work on. It's kind of like, it's kind of like when you clean your living room and you say, wow, you know what I mean? You clean the kitchen and you know, like the, the, the area where people can see and you're like, yeah, my house is awesome. Yeah, but what about your closet? What about that back bedroom over there where all that junk is at? We like to clean up just the living room, you know what I mean? Just where people can, you know, kind of come in and see, hey, everything looks good, guys. Everything's great. But what about all that junk back there? We got to do better. Like I'm telling you, we got to do better. When you become a, a, a mom or a dad, please understand that all of this junk right here comes oozing out and we're pouring it into our children. All that unforgiveness, that's the inheritance that we're going to leave our kids. Like we have got to get rid of it for your sake, for your children's sake, for anybody that we come in contact sake. We're just poisoning. We're just planting all these seeds of unforgiveness, all these seeds, seeds of bitterness. We're just walking around, just, just, just spewing out all of this just... And, and we wonder why we find it so hard as Christians to love your neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. I don't even love me. How am I going to love my neighbor? I can't even look at myself in the mirror. <laughs> we got to do better, y'all. We have got to do better. I love you guys. I got to get out of here. God bless you. I pray that this helps you, but we, we have got to do better. If you can't do it on your own, listen to me. That's the reason why God provides everything that we need. Jesus paid for everything on the cross. That is, that is, as to, that is why we need the help of the Holy Spirit. Okay? I can't, I can't leave that out right now. That is why we need the Holy Spirit. And again, that is why we have to be obedient as well. When the Holy Spirit leads us and, and, and tells us to do something, we got to do it. It's for our own good. We got to learn how to move in obedience. Okay? This walk is not just about what benefits me. I get to do what I want to do. Yeah, I don't want to do that, Lord. Yeah, I'm solid. No, 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 no. It's a, it's, it's a walk of obedience. Please understand, okay? Mom, dad, you know what I mean. When you tell your children to do something, they might not want to do it, but you're asking them to do it. There's a reason why you're, you're asking them to do it. It's for their benefit. It's for their own good. They might not understand it. They might not want it, but you know, right? Okay, your heavenly father is the same way. You might not want to do it. You might not want to extend forgiveness, but I'm telling you, it's for your own good. A lot of times we think of generational curses, all oh, that, that, that's something, whoa, no, 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 unforgiveness, that's a generational curse, because if you don't end it, you're going to hand it down to your children, and your children are going to inherit all of this anger and frustration, and they don't even know what the heck it is, they don't even know what to call it, they don't even, I don't even know how I got this, I don't even know how I got here, and since they're, they don't even understand it, they don't know what it is, they're going to hand it down to their children. And it isn't until somebody stands up and says, you know what, I'm done carrying this unnecessary weight. I don't want to be this way no more. And if you're not strong enough, then Father God, I'm weak. Please be my strength. Do whatever it is that you got to do. Open heart surgery. Get all this stuff out of me, please. I got to go. But... Please understand what I'm telling you and please take this serious. You don't have to carry all of that weight. You don't have to carry all that anger. You don't have to carry all that misery. You don't have to be a bitter person. 
and drinking and smoking and, and, and whatever it is that you're trying to do to, 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 to make you feel better, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Yes, it gives you a sense of peace, but it goes away. And the thing about it is, is that when you don't address it, you don't do something with it, it keeps getting worse and it keeps getting worse and it keeps getting worse. And when that thing starts turning into bitterness, those roots go deeper and deeper and deeper. And it's, it becomes even harder to get rid of it. I'm telling you. Man. I love you guys. I got to go. But I pray that this blesses you. I pray that this helps you. I love you guys. God bless you.